What we have to do as traders is we have to say discipline with our trading plan. If our rules are met, regardless of what pair and what the strength is, we have to take the trade. So I'm looking for buys here on AU. I'm looking for potential shorts and then buys from these levels. I'm going to trade based upon my rules and be disciplined with them. And in the long run, I will be profitable. That's all you have to worry about. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the pre-market analysis series. Hope you guys are doing really well today and enjoying your weekend thus far. I hope you had a great trading week. Uh, here at Aerial FX, we sure did. I'm going to be going over some trades that we took, um, as well as discussing some of the new setups that uh, could definitely play out this upcoming week. So obviously, you guys should already know, NFP was on Friday, the, the 3rd of November, uh, which is actually today when I'm recording this video. So we did see a lot of a dollar weakness that was definitely anticipated. Um, I presented a video on my personal YouTube channel, um, a video that haven't been created, that hasn't been created in a while, decided to share it with you all, was sort of a very important breakdown prior to NFP. Wanted to go over some uh, clear directional bias and some setups that were forming, and we had a lot of great trades come from that. Our sponsor, Blue Guardian, is the only prop firm that gives their traders a tool to protect them from hitting their max daily loss and over trading. It's super simple to use. Just set the Guardian protector each day from your dashboard. Did you also know that they've just released an unlimited time evaluation with a zero trading days requirement, giving you plenty of time to hit their low 8 and 4% targets, making it super fast to get funded. Plus, it's cheaper than the 40 day time limit evaluation. Check out out the link and coupon in the description to get 10% off your next Blue Guardian evaluation. So I'm going to first start off by talking about AUD USD here. I do have uh, quite a few pairs I'm going to be going over tonight, uh, but don't worry, I'm not going to do a full top-down analysis on these. I'm actually going to make this quite short and sweet, just going over just the general areas of interest and then going over just kind of some general understanding in terms of smart money concepts that led up to me wanting to trade from these levels. So first start off by talking about AU, uh, we can clearly see that we are bullish now. We have made a higher high uh, from our previous swing point. We had a lot of sell side liquidity that was run, but prior to that, this is the most important move in the market here. Uh, the reason for that is because we swept buy side liquidity, attracted buyers above the breakout here, also took any stops that were above this high. We rallied lower and took any stops of the buyers who traded the breakout. Also took the stops of anyone who was buying with this retail support and then rallied higher and took anyone out of the market who was selling below the breakout here. So that huge buy to sell to buy, that type two manipulation that we talk about in our mentorship, very important type of concept to understand. So anyways, we had a reaction. We ended up creating a lower time frame, head and shoulders. This is all just infrastructural liquidity that we swept to the downside, attracting sellers below the breakout of the neckline. We actually retested that quite well uh, and then started to go short, enticing more sellers. And then we can see that blast off to the upside. We had that repricing event here prior to the break of this structural high. And then we made that overall higher high in the market. So this is one overall expansion. If you want to classify it from a lower time frame perspective, higher high, higher low low, higher high, or once we have a higher high and an overall pullback, that would signify that higher low and then another higher high is likely to ensue. So two levels of possible demand. If we don't get a deep pullback next week, which I, I would like to see a deeper pullback into this level here, but if we don't, then I'd like to take along from this level of demand. We can see that with that one hour 50 EMA is coming into fruition in our level. If we get a little bit of a deeper pullback then we have that sort of repricing on uh, on this time frame here. So just depending upon how deep we get the retracements, those are great levels of demand to be looking to buy. Uh, continuing here, Euro GBP pound is seeing some big strength. Now we haven't come up into our level of overall, we'll just go to the higher time frame, overall supply. And we can see here that this is the start of the last buying volume, which created the supply that ended up making the lower low. We haven't quite tapped into it yet. Not to say that we can't do that. We are still definitely bullish. This could be a false move. This could just be a breakout. We can see these equal lows here. This could just be a sell side liquidity run for maybe an engulfing come next week and push back up into this overall supply zone. So I'm not disregarding this zone. This is definitely something I'm looking to uh, trade off of. Um, and on the lower time frame, we can see we are definitely still bullish we take it from structure points, high, low, high, low, high, this could just be a low for a higher high. That's what we could obviously see. However, on the far 50 
uh, excuse me, 4 hour 50 EMA and the 1 hour 50 EMA are in this area of supply here. This could just be a lower time frame distribution to where we can see we failed to generate the higher high here. And instead we made the lower low and that was the result of that lower low, which is that supply zone. So we could see a pullback into that level for maybe one more drive to the downside and then maybe some overall longs, who, who knows, but I'm definitely going to be looking for shorts from this level short term. If we lose, then we can be looking to sell again when we get back up into our higher time from objective point. Um, so overall, I want to see you know, pushes at least back up into this level, if not back up into that level, and then overall shorts, um, but we'll just see what happens. So that's your GBP. GBP AUD, um, talked about this level on yesterday's video. For those of you who follow me on YouTube, uh, I talked about this level here. Obviously, you know, not in huge profit by any stretch of imagination, but um, could easily continue. And the reason why I think we will is because first and foremost, the Aussie dollar is very strong. We can see on the higher time frame, AUD NZD is pushing higher, AUD Chef is pushing higher, uh, AUD CAD is pushing higher, and AUD USD is pushing higher as well. So I want to continue to buy the Aussie dollar. Um, we can see that GA is uh, inversely correlated with those pairs. So on the higher time frame, uh, we had, and just bear with me here, as I'll kind of briefly go over this, this is important to know. We had a high, a low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high. This is not a break of structure, okay? This is more of just a liquidity run for continuations. We can see we created equal lows. We have this retail trend line that we broke and we actually retested it. So what is retail doing? Well, they're selling all day long. We wanna do the opposite, we wanna buy, right? Retail is trapped short, price ends up going long. It actually reacts off this level of demand as we can see right there. Before making the higher high, where are our repricing events? Well, when the structure or counter trend was broken this way to the upside, these two regions of price will be our levels of demand. So we can see we haven't reached those two levels yet. This is still one overall swing. This could easily just be one overall pullback into our zone for continuations long. What is this? What does this look like to you? Very easy, head and shoulders, right? Shoulder, head, shoulder, could be a potential fake out of the neckline equal lows, sell side liquidity, which is just more reason to be selling this. But, you know, short term selling for potential long term buying, that could be a fake out of the neckline to then drive price higher, retail would be trapped short below those lows. And then we go long from those levels, observe the masses and do the opposite. So on the lower time frame, we can see that the lower time frame is definitely bearish. And this would be our target these uh, demand zones down here around 1.87 or 1.8750. So the end of this pullback stopped here. We had that last buy side liquidity run and then we made the lower low. More importantly, we failed to generate a higher high and then we made a lower low again. We made a lower high into supply, a lower low. And again, I said, you know, multiple different levels. I said this on yesterday's video. We can have this level of supply here, just very short pullbacks for continuations. We can see that we have relatively equal lows here. We had equal highs. We ran those highs. We could now run sell side. Uh, but I also said we could have a deeper retracement up into this huge level of imbalance. That's just straight selling volume. No buying was offered in that region. We could come up as far as this supply zone up here. So Anywhere between maybe 9.1 and 9.150 would be a good region for shorts as well. But overall, a lot of conviction and a lot of confluence for continuation short into at least 1.8750 or 1.87. So that's GA. GN, same sort of deal, very correlated. So if I zoom out, we will notice that we have equal lows here. So we are overall bearish. Well, higher time frame, I guess you could classify us as bullish. But if you look at it from a structure standpoint, we can see that this is one expansion, this is one pullback. This is one expansion, and we're in this pullback phase, right? Many people would be like, well, why can't this be the expansion? Uh, and then this would be the pullback, and then we could have like something like this. Well, yes and no, because this is the current range of the market. This is the expansion. Until we make a higher high, we're still technically in this pullback phase. Right. So I would like to see a pullback into where did we break the counter trend? Well, first of all, where is the counter trend? It's right here. Where did we break? Low, high, low, high, supply, low, high, supply, low, broke right through it. So this last selling volume or anywhere in this huge imbalance is where we're looking for price to come into um, before potential continuations to the upside higher time frame, which could be around two, right? price of two, and that's a huge psychological level for GBP NZD. 
so we can see how liquidity is being built up prior to these levels, enticing swing traders maybe to take longer positions, really, really just building liquidity to then run before going long, right? So why does liquidity, why is liquidity built up prior to large zones? Well, we have to understand how liquidity moves markets, right? When you push a buy and a sell, right? You're doing something. I know it's very small, but you are doing something. You are introducing liquidity into the market, okay? The market is not driven by just random forces. It's not driven, I mean, there's a lot of things that go on in the background. In order for price to drive higher, there needs to be a sufficient amount of liquidity on the opposite side of the market for price to buy, right? If there are no sellers, there are no buyers. That's what makes up a market, buyers and sellers. If price is gonna go long, someone needs to be short selling, right? Because if someone is short selling, what does the word selling mean? Selling means to sell something to someone else, to give it to someone else, AKA the buyer. The buyer takes from the seller. Therefore, when the buyers come into play, they need sellers. Okay, so that's how we generate liquidity, or that's why we generate liquidity prior to levels is because if everyone is looking to buy here or buy in here and their stops are placed here, 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 or down in here or wherever, what happens when the buyers are hit out of their stop losses? They're forced to sell back their position to the market. If they're in buys, right, and price starts to fall and they wanna get out of their buys because they think the price is just gonna continue to fall and fall and fall, they need to buy back, or excuse me, sell back their position at a lower price in which they bought it from, which is which results in the loss, right? That that's what it truly means. When you see like a negative dollar amount on your MT4, or MT5, it's not just there for, you know, to be to look pretty, right? It, it means something. It means you, if you're buying and it hits your stop loss when price sells off, you're essentially selling the market back at a lower price in which you originally bought it from. Therefore, the difference is the loss. Therefore, in order for all the big whales, if we're going to see this as a huge area of interest, and obviously we don't know, this is just analysis, um, but let's just say this, this is actually true, then if all the big institutions and whales are getting in here, they need a hell of a lot of sellers to become, you know, sell them the position so that they can buy it. How do they do that? They generate liquidity prior to the levels, right? So when buyers come in prematurely and price sells off, they're forced to sell back their positions to the market, AKA the institutions now have someone to buy from. That's exactly how liquidity is transferred from buyer to sellers in the market. And that's how it's presented in terms of price charts. So that's exactly, um, how that works essentially uh, from a really like a, like a dummy perspective. Uh, I'm not, I not, won't go into the nitty gritty details because uh, you really don't need to know that. All you need to know is what I said. Uh, but anyways, we can see the slowdown in price. We had that final liquidity run above this previous high and then we made the lower low. So what I'm assuming based upon looking at the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar since they're correlated and looking at GBP AUD, I could only assume GBP NZD is likely to follow suit. So that would be really nice because you know we could sweep buy side liquidity here, come up into that repricing or a little bit into this huge imbalance, uh, 2.0850, maybe 2.09 into this last supply zone or just into that first supply zone. So anywhere in this vicinity, we are looking for shorts into that sell side liquidity and into this zone around 2.0150 would be that first level, 2.01 and then two. Um, so that's how, kind of how we can read liquidity in the market. All right. NZD USD, very similar to AUD USD, and it's exactly kind of what we did. We accumulated, we expanded, we broke the previous structure point. More importantly, low, high, low, high, failed to make a lower low, higher high. So now what are we looking for? Pull back too long. So before we failed to make a lower low, and before the market went long, we swept retail out of the market. We swept a lot of liquidity out of the market before the real move occurs, and that's typically what happens. So equal highs were created by, how many people were probably buying above the breakout of that resistance? 
probably a lot of people. So what happens? Price comes back down, hits their stop losses. Oh, they turn around and sell it. Okay, now I know where it's going. It's going to short off. We broke below the support. Nope, right back to the upside. Everyone's flushed out. Now the real move can occur. Buy to sell to buy just went over it. It's type two manipulation. So with that being said, once the structure is broken, we have to look for repricing events. Well, our first one was originally here. We didn't get that push that I originally thought could occur because of the news. I thought that the news could be used as the excuse to inject the volatility to push into that level to then react. But we never did. We ended up just having an initial reaction long today. But we could easily pull back next week. We can see the one hour 50 EMA is right at that first zone. We have our first demand zone. If it comes lower, we have that second one. So looking for longs from our levels, we can see that we are looking to expand higher. Okay, that's a, you know following suit with AUDUSD as well. Folks, Black Bull Markets have 10 merch packs to give away to clients who sign up before the end of the year, including one of these trader keys. So to go in the draw, all you need to do is sign up with the link below this video or in the podcast description, and you'll go in the draw to win. It's that simple. And remember, folks, when you sign up to Black Bull Markets through the trading nut link below, you're going to get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000 on your first deposit. All you need to do is click the link in the description below the video or the podcast. USD CAD. Same sort of deal. Uh, I'm looking for shorts. Dollar is weak at the current moment. Higher time frame, we are bullish for sure. If I just zoom out, we can clearly see we're making higher highs, higher lows, and now we just made a higher high. What just happened? That previous high back from March of this year was finally taken out. So could we come lower? Potentially, but if we are to go long, I think we have to at least come down into here, right? Overall pullback, higher high. That's the last selling volume. This is a huge imbalance. Um, so I'm definitely looking for shorts, at least into that level. And then if we get accumulation schematic and we do something like that, then I'll be looking for potential longs, All right? So if I scale in, I don't really have a particular setup, but if I scale into this, we can see one, two, three, four, five touches of this trend line. This Thursday evening uh, for me, I'm, in, I'm on Eastern time. So Friday morning for a lot of you people who are in the UK. Um, you would have seen probably the reaction from this trend line. Retail is likely buying. Well, what happens? It falls. Okay. So probably looking for pullbacks, maybe back up into this level here, maybe a little bit higher, um, but still looking for overall shorts, at least into that zone of interest. So nothing too clear, nothing that meets my rules, but just trying to give you a directional bias here. USD Swiss franc, same sort of deal. Um, two possible scenarios. Uh, I do think we are definitely going to short off further. Uh, we're definitely going to take out that this low here. Friday's low will be run, um, but it's just a matter of where are we going to stop. Are we going to go long um, below this low here, or are we going to go long before that low? Well, we have to look at it from this perspective, and I'm going to you know discuss again type two manipulation. Same thing that happened here, equal highs, equal lows, took buy side first, ran sell side, then went buy side. Buy to sell to buy, everyone's shaken out. We can now continue with the trickle-like state, with this, which is the real move. Um, so we had repricings, we had one right here, we had one here in a lower time frame, and then we had one right here, last selling volume. So those three levels are unmitigated. We have not come down into them. I was hoping that this move would push into it, but we never got it. So could we experience that push into these levels potentially before continuations. Yeah, we could, right? However, at the same time, we had the exact same thing happen. Consolidation block before the level, right? Equal highs, equal lows, buy to sell to buy. We can see the beautiful breakout, the re-breakout, and then the real move, right? So the last selling volume is right here or really right in here. This is the failure to generate the lower low. So. I do would I would definitely want to see price come lower at least into this zone. If we get reactions or potential setups or you know buy setups for longs, then yes, that would be the level in which I would like to see that happen. Uh, we can see here that this is a shoulder, head, shoulder. We had the breakout. This could be a fake out, right? We could pop down into this overall zone, right? Retail is probably short here, right below this, and then we could rise up potentially. Or what we do is we come a little bit deeper into our overall zones and then we can still be looking for buys. So right now it's a little tricky because the dollar has not come up into its higher time frame objective yet. We have not pushed up into this level of supply, into this imbalance. We have yet to do that. We have a lot of buy side liquidity. Could this just be a false move? Possibly. I mean, look at what happened. 
one, two, three, four touches of this trend line. Retail is probably thinking shorts now, right? We could easily pop right back up now. So this could be a sell to buy to sell move, right? We're generating this like, sh like wedge pattern prior to the level. We broke out, maybe enticed premature shorts, went long, potentially take their stops, enticing buyers above the breakout here and then go short. Something like that could occur, right? So we have to be careful. So this is why it's a little confusing sometimes because, you know, with USD Chef, you know, we're looking for overall longs, but right now dollar is very weak. But at the same time, Aussie dollar, we're looking for overall longs as well, but the dollar could also be possibly strong next week and a push right back down. So what we have to do as traders is we have to say discipline with our trading plan. If our rules are met, regardless of what pair and, and you know what the strength is, we have to take the trade. So I'm looking for buys here on AU. I'm looking for potential shorts and then buys from these levels. I'm gonna trade based upon my rules and be disciplined with them. And in the long run, I will be profitable. That's all you have to worry about. So definitely, I, I do think that we'll probably see some more dollar weakness before we see some strength. Um, but you know, we'll just have to see what the market brings come next week. GBP US, or excuse me, GBP JPY. Overall, we're bullish on GJ, right? Pound is very strong at the moment. Uh, if I scale in here, what you will notice is that we made a high, we had an overall pullback, and we made a higher high. With this overall pullback came generation of liquidity. One, two, three, four, five touches. We sold below liquidity, mitigated this demand, which mitigated this demand here, and then we bought. We repriced, failed to make a lower low, made a higher high. In the process of making this higher high, we had this little repricing event here. So I had one level and two levels, just missed my first. Um, so what price could do is one of two things. Uh, we, what we could do is see this as a pullback. Price could come into that selling volume and go long. One hour 50 EMA is approaching. Or what price could do is use this as sell side liquidity to run, come into either one of those two levels and then go long. Either way, I'm looking for longs. It's just, am I going to be looking to buy here? And it, I mean, I, yes, I will be. But if it goes short and continues to fall, will I still buy? Yeah, because these, these levels are still valid for sure. All right. Uh, a couple more NZD CAD. So NZD CAD is a little bit tricky. Um, I do. I would like to say that we're, we're likely to experience a higher high, um, but it is a little tricky right now because we're stuck within ranges. Meaning we are still overall bearish, but at the same time we're bullish. What do I mean? What do I mean by that? Well, higher time frame we're bearish. Low, high, low. Right. Could we be in an overall pullback phase? Sure. However, we're also lower time frame bullish as well. We have accumulated in price. Right? We can see the slowdown. We can see the breakout structure, the repricing, and then the continuation. This is the last point of return. That's the last selling volume that failed to make a lower low below that low in this huge pullback that ultimately led to the higher high. So we can see that once price made a higher high off that previous structure point, higher high, we made a higher low. I wasn't expecting it because we're overall bearish, but the fact that we stopped in that zone, swept sell side liquidity here and did the exact same thing, accumulation, discrete lower lows, lower highs, slow down, break structure, failed to generate the lower low below this previous low, made a higher high. This is the last selling volume and more precisely right in here. If this is the overall last selling volume, well, we have a lower time frame trend within that. Low, high, low, high, failed, higher high. Sell side liquidity. One, two, three touches of this trend line, there are sell side liquidity resting below that low. That's why I was really hoping to see price, you know, push down into that level, sweep sell side, mitigate that demand, and continue with the structure like this into at least this level. We did push up, uh, push up into that level, but if price does come back down into here, I still will be looking for longs. Maybe on lower risk because it's not as highly probable anymore, but I still like the level. Um, but the fact that we came, whoops, the fact that we're still bearish and could this be, could this be something like boom, 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 and we go like that to continue with the lower time frame trend? Sure, right? 
So if that's the case, I drew out this area of supply here. That's the last buying volume. I'm not shorting it right now, but if we get some sort of, you know, I don't know, I mean, that was bad drawing. Maybe like, I don't know, something like this. And we have a supply zone right here. Maybe this could be possibly a shorting opportunity if something like that occurs. Building up of liquidity, have one final run, right? Maintain the lower low, lower high structure, break the counter trend pull back into a supply zone to short, that could be a possibility then look to potentially long. So as of right now, I don't see any selling opportunities. Um, and as of right now, I, I see a potential buy opportunity, but we'll just have to kind of sit on our hands for the time being because we're quite a ways away. Um, same sort of deal with AUD CAD. In a sense, we have the same sort of levels, right? We're following demand, demand, mitigation, demand, higher high, mitigation. Two levels of demand, higher high, looking for overall pullback to mitigate those levels to continue along with the trend, right? We can see this as maybe sell side liquidity here. So run it, continuations. However, like I said on NCD CAD, AD CAD is still bearish too. We're in overall downtrend. And where did we just come up into? Well, we have to understand lower and higher time frame structure. Top down is important. Higher time frame structure says low, high, low, high, low. This is all just discrete lower lows, lower highs within that, this overall expansion. Now we're in this overall pullback. When does this overall pullback potentially end to fulfill the low, high, low, high, low sequence, right? Because in the higher time frame, this is all just one expansion. This is all just one pullback. We're likely to have another expansion, right? So where is that likely to occur? Well, look at the pullback on the higher time frame. We have to look at the overall pullback here. This is demand. We came into that here. This is the new demand. We came into that here. We failed to generate the higher high. We had a high, low, high, low, high, low, failed, lower low. And that's where we started the downtrend. All right, so that was the last buying volume right in here. So this general zone, and I have 0 0.89, um, a psychological level, as that potential level to short from. So this is the objective, the higher time frame objective. We could come up a little bit higher, maybe up into 8.950 maybe back up into here, filling the imbalance, right? So we are finally up into that level. We swept all these highs, all these inner structural highs. We're finally up into these levels. So we have to be careful, maybe using half risk on these setups because technically we've come up into supply, higher time from objective in an overall downtrend. So we could easily make a lower low now, but these are still valid levels and we could continue from them if we were to make a higher high. So maybe use less risk if you're going to be. Uh, obviously you have to adjust or take profits, should be higher now. But um, anyways, what we could also be looking for, just like AUD CAD, who knows, maybe you know a slowdown in price, liquidity run, something like this. Sweeping buy side liquidity, breaking structure to the downside, pulling back up into maybe some sort of supply level that forms, maybe a repricing, and then looking for shorts and then maybe looking to buy. So a potential hedge opportunity because the lower and the higher timeframes don't agree or lower time frame bullish, higher time frame bearish. So this is when it's okay if we get the proper setup to look to hedge. But how we hedge is not just because we're lower time frame bullish and higher time frame bearish. It's because we would have setups for both, right? Just because, let's just say for instance, right? Let's just say price starts to short off from here and we just go like this and then price comes you know, into this level, maybe starts to long a little bit. Am I just going to short because I want to hedge? No, because there's no setup for me. Where is the supply? Where Where is the liquidity run? Where is the structure? Right. I need confluence for every single setup I have. I treat each setup as its own, even if it's a hedge. If I have a buy setup and a sell setup and everything meets my rules, great, I'll hedge. Right. Just because the higher and lower timeframes may not be in alignment, if I have a buy setup but not a sell setup, I'm only taking the buy until I see a sell setup, All right? This is the kind of discipline we have to have in our trading, or we're just gonna to continue to fail and fail and fail. And then sooner or later, you're gonna say, wow, I've been trading for five years and still not profitable. Well, yeah, no shit, because you haven't been following your plan and being disciplined, All right? You gotta sometimes be real with yourself as well. All right, so that's uh, AUD CAD, last one for the evening, AUD NZD. So AUD NZD overall bullish, in my opinion, um, I've went over this plenty of times before on prior pre-market analysis videos, so I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to kind of discuss just the general idea. Um, higher time frame level, well, first of all, our entries from previous demand, liquidity was run, 
right? Breakout of liquidity, retail is shorting, we're longing. We also had a demand level way up to the left anyways. So retail is just screwing themselves. But anyways, a huge imbalance, huge imbalance formed inside demand. Guys, if you're not following along, like if this doesn't make sense to you, you got you need to be paying attention to more of these pre-market analysis videos. I'm telling you, this is golden stuff. This is nuggets. I send this stuff out on a day-to-day -day basis to my VIP members on a week-to-week -week basis for you guys for free. All this stuff plays out exactly how I said for the, mo for the most part. I'm not 100% obviously, but the majority of the stuff I talk about is spot on. I said verbatim that these two trades could easily be the trade of the year. Look at the kind of reaction we saw from it. It's because of my conviction for the trade. This is probably why it occurred because right? I had so much confluence. Looking for continuation to the, to the upside anyway. So anyways, again, building up of liquidity. We just talked about it a few minutes ago. Building up liquidity, sell side liquidity. We're now running it into the zone of interest. So now the real move can occur in the market. What do we do? We accumulate. We broke this previous high. We've made a higher high. So yeah, we're probably looking at maybe a potential pullback, but that's where we can retest the accumulation, fill the imbalance, maybe come into demand here and look for continuations to the upside, right? So looking for overall higher highs, but on a lower time frame, could we be looking to sell? We could be, you know, we, we can see distribution. We distributed in price. And then price failed to make a higher high and instead we made a lower low and we broke structure. We have to be careful though, because could this just be a liquidity run for our continuations? Could be. If price does something like that, then we would look at this like expansion, pullback, expansion again, right? So we just have to be careful because we're kind of trading counter trend with a potential short. Have the one hour 50 EMA here, good confluence. So looking for rallies, potentially short term to the downside. If that happens, great. Then we can look to buy it from our overall zone. If it continues long, let's say, it, let me just get rid of these drawings. Let's just say it does this, right? And goes long and makes a higher high. Well, then we know likely that this is more of just a liquidity run. And then we can be looking for pullbacks to long it again and continue with the trend. And then if it goes like that and breaks like this, then we know that this is the end of the expansion, start of the pullback. If price you know, ends up going something like this, then we can still buy it from here and look to go long. Either way, we just adapt to what the market shows us and we're not gonna be 100% every time. We will potentially lose trades. It's all just about sticking to your trading plan, being disciplined. And if you lose a trade, move on to the next one. Understand where the, the higher time frame is going. Trade with that time frame. If you have counter trend opportunities, take them if your rules are met. If not, sit on your hands. And if they're met and you lose, continue to adapt to what the market's showing you. And if it's showing you now something different, go attack it the same way, right? So that's what I'm looking for. That's pretty much all I have for you guys this evening or this really this weekend. Um, but of course, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on my Telegram or IG or wherever. I'll be happy to help you in any way possible. Um, if you're interested in learning how we do this on a day-to-day -day basis and get these levels in precision, feel free to head over to my website, aerialfxtrading.com. Book a free call with me. It's free. I'd love to talk to you. Um, obviously, I don't want to waste your time and please don't waste my time. I, it would be an investment to join my program. Um, so quite frankly, if you're broke, don't do it. Not worth it. But if you're willing to invest in yourself, which is the most important thing, then do it because it could be the right fit for you. And if not, no worries. I'll even provide my trading plan absolutely for free for you just for booking a call. Um, so are you willing to invest in yourself to make this a career? Are you willing to invest in yourself and be disciplined and put in the work and be coachable and learn the material that can make you wealthy beyond your wildest dreams? It's possible. Are you willing to do it? So anyways, guys, have a great weekend and have a happy... What's coming up? Oh, Halloween already ended. Never mind. What am I thinking? Anyways, guys, take care. Have a good one. Uh, happy trading going forward.
tired of missing trades or spending hours at the charts? Introducing my Robot Builders Club. With our platform, you can build bots in minutes, not weeks, without any coding required. Get lifetime access to my video course, VIP community, and over 40 ready-made robots. Works with MT4 or MT5, and as a bonus, you'll get three months access to my Robot Lab, where we build and test bots on live calls every week. Join the hundreds of traders who are trading smarter, not harder. Click the link in the description to learn more, get the free training, and download a free robot.